Good evening, Red Star Rebels. It's August 30th, 2022. This is Season 2, Podcast Number 24. We are Red Star Report. I'm Hal G. Lore. This is Voices for the California Nation. We're at the end of August, and it's a hot one. So, for tonight, let's put aside the usual California independence political kung fu we normally talk about. And just talk about the movement in general for a moment and the California National Party in particular. In case you haven't noticed, this weekend will be Labor Day weekend, basically eight weeks before the midterm vote in November. And I'm not going to lie to you. Politically speaking, I think the news cycles are going to be like living in a wind tunnel where somebody keeps pouring fertilizer into the turbines. For those that don't get that reference, that means the political shit will be constantly hitting the fans and everything politics is just going to go nuts. Now, with that being said, everybody knows that the California National Party is the political party of the California independence movement. Mic drop. And going into this election craziness, we should be taking a look at this. Full disclosure, by the way, I do not hold any office within, let alone sit on the board of directors of the CNP. I didn't run out and get permission in advance either to do this, but with the craziness that's going on in politics, and since this isn't going to be a policy discussion, I don't think they're going to mind. What I'm going to talk about for tonight, for a few minutes, is just the need to generate awareness of the California independence movement and of simple ways we can all use to get the word out. As an example, for Red Star Report, I'm always saying the same thing at the end of every podcast. If you want to support the real media group for the California independence movement, it's all about the algorithms. That will probably end up on a t-shirt at some point, by the way. But the real message there is that I can't do it alone. My Red Star partner, Shankar Singham, he can't do it alone either. And even with our Red Star Report... Uh, content contributors, we can't do it alone. We need you, the grassroots of the California independence movement, to help us spread the word. The same thing goes for the California National Party. The internet calls it viral marketing. It's the modern internet world equivalent of -of word-of-mouth advertising where awareness and support for the California independence movement grows like tossing pebbles into a pond and watching the ripples move out across the water. And the more of you that represent for the California National Party and the California Independence Movement, the more pebbles are being tossed into that pond. So, for Red Star Report, I'm just going to continue to be absolutely shameless in asking you to hit uh, hit that like and subscribe button. So, hey, hit that like and subscribe button, okay? You're welcome. But what Red Star Report really needs is for people to share those Red Star Report podcast links. In California Independence Movement memes, Red Star Report puts out as much as they're comfortable to do so. Because don't get me wrong. I mean, likes are great. But it's the shares that create the ripples on that pond that will help the California independence movement message go viral. So on behalf of the California National Party, I'd like to ask you to do me two little favors, just for fun, and to help everybody get used to the idea. To get the ball rolling before everything goes crazy with the midterms. First, 
I'd like to ask everyone who has one to wear their California National Party t-shirts whenever they go to the grocery store to shop for this Labor Day weekend. Call it an act of California passive resistance. But this act alone lets people see that there are other people out there that support something called the California National Party. Curiosity is a thing. And what do people do today when they see something they don't know about? They go to the internet and look it up. Maybe a few even read the California National Party website and you know, read the About Us part and could become interested. And that's not a bad result for just going to the grocery store in a CNP t-shirt, don't you think? And who knows? Maybe somebody at the store might even start a conversation and ask you about your shirt. Oh, the horror. As for the second thing I'd like to ask you. This weekend, instead of putting out the American flag, and I know you don't do that anymore, right? I mean, come on, really? Please, show your support for the independent California that we all know and love by displaying your California National Party flag if you got one. If not, fly your California flag or your California Red Star flag. Just don't put out the clown rag, okay? The idea is to get people wondering, to start or restart the California independence conversation and create ripples on that pond. What we want here is participation, and on your part, to help us generate awareness. Because trust me, Red Star Rebels, no matter how the November midterms shake out across America, the California independence movement and the California National Party that represent it are going to want that awareness. So let's have some fun with some California passive resistance here. And just try it out for this Labor Day weekend. And again... You're welcome. This is Voices for the California Nation. It's time for Activism in Action with Shankar Singham. Reporting on Texas, one of our favorite punching bags. And some surprising language from Beto O'Rourke. And about California immigrants to Texas and Tucker Carlson and... That's launching in three, two, one. This is our country, folks. This is California. Hello, Californios. Welcome to another episode of Activism in Action. I'm Shankar. Let's get right into it. Texas. So um, let's hear what happened here. So after the Uvalde shooting, um, Governor Abbott got up on, on in the school uh, auditorium there and he lined up with all the uh, sheriffs and, uh, and Ted Cruz's and all the other uh, uh, dimwits in the Texas state legislature, and they patted themselves on the back. What a great job they did stopping the Uvalde shooting, right? And then you see a guy get up there and just start yelling at at, at the governor. And uh, and I and I was looking at him like, man, that's got to be some parent. Some parent just got up there and, and is letting him have it, dude. I would too if 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 my school when my kids were in that school or my God forbid my kids were a victim of the of, of that school shooting, I'd be right up in that face, uh, 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 doing the same thing. So I was, I was like, good on that guy. Come to find out. That was Beto O'Rourke. I'm like, Beto O'Rourke, damn, man. This guy's got a he's got a little bit of balls on him. Good for him. Good for him. So I took notice of him right there. Um coming out, showing showing a little bit more spunk. And then, and then this happened, which totally earned my respect 100 percent for Texas, uh, Texas's own Beto O'Rourke. Let's listen to this uh clip right here. Now 11 weeks since we lost 19 kids and their two teachers 
shot to death with a weapon originally designed for use in combat, legally purchased by an 18 year old who did not try to obtain one when he was 16 or 17, but followed the law that's on the books, ladies and gentlemen, that says that you can buy not one, you can buy two or more if you want to, AR-15s, hundreds of rounds of ammunition, and take that weapon that was originally designed for use on the battlefields in Vietnam to penetrate an enemy soldier's helmet at 500 feet and knock him down dead up against kids at five feet. It may be funny to you, motherfucker, but it's not funny to me, okay? So, so there's Beto O'Rourke um, letting him have it, letting him have it right there. And uh, if you know, if you hear why uh, the guy was laughing, Beto O'Rourke was saying something about uh, designed a weapon to to shoot a shoulder soldier through the helmet and knock him down. Uh, so the AR-15 is not going to shoot a uh, go. Th- the round isn't going to go through a helmet. Uh, you need an armor piercing round for that. So obviously, some heckler. Uh, thought that oh ha ha that's that's funny you don't know what you're talking about yeah I think you're missing the point asshole I think that uh, that amosexual is missing the fucking point about what he's trying to say about all these people fucking uh, shooting up schools I mean this motherfucker has has to laugh and I'm glad Beto fucking said called him out as a motherfucker he's a pussy motherfucker he should have said hey, I, I, he should have said you might find this funny you pussy motherfucker but uh, I don't find it funny to me that's what he should have fucking goddamn said because these people are fucking cowards they're pussies if you can't if you can't relinquish your firearm uh uh, rights for a, a fucking kid who got shot in the face, you fuck. Um, you, I don't even know what to say to that. I don't even know what to say to that. It's absolutely disgusting. And it looks like Beto O'Rourke is, is, is uh, just as disgusted to me too, as, as I am. But there you go. And, and liberals, progressives, leftists, take fucking note. Take note. Look at what he called Motherfucker. You stand up. Stand the fuck up. Don't take that shit. Don't take those laughs. Don't take don't take being called or even even if you overhear someone else uh saying fucking democrat, fucking liberal, fucking whatever that is and and downplaying the left, you fucking put, go right in that guy's face and you tell him what's up. Just like Beto just did. Because being quiet is no longer an option. So if Beto O'Rourke wins the governorship of Texas, you can be damn sure Texas is going to is, will be blue and will never go red again. Texas will never go red again. Guaranteed. Texas, you wanted to play ball with the big boys. You came over here and 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 uh, lured our businesses and then uh, eviscerated them to nothingness to. To absolutely to garbage companies now, you you lied to our residents, luring them over to your uh, to your uh, state uh, under the guises of, of less taxes. That's a bullshit lie. Yeah, you might not have any state income tax, but your sales tax is through the roof. So is your property tax. That turned out to be bullshit. Your energy grid's a joke, um, Texas. And this is what happens when you get an influx of millions of millions of people when you become a giant powerhouse like like California. Welcome. Abbott, not even having a clue. In fact, you've got Abbott. You've got Abbott coming out at the CPAC convention in Houston saying that uh, uh, the Californians that are coming over here are conservative. No shit, Sherlock. I go, yeah, that's right. Okay, I, I, I believe you. Um, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're Californians. Let's go to the article real quick. Uh, This is the Bloomberg, uh, August 4th, 2022. Texas Governor Greg Abbott to his fellow conservatives that they don't need to worry about transplants from California and New York turning the state blue ahead of his re-election. Abbott spoke about the state's strong job creation and influx of new business and and residents, and particularly from California, at the Conservative Political Action Conference in Dallas on Thursday. He also suggested that many of the California newcomers are conservative and that liberal Texans have moved to the West Coast. Quote, we have an exchange program going on, Abbott said in jest as the crowd cheered. 
We're getting the California conservatives. We're sending them our liberals. <laughs> Idiot. Abbott's remarks highlighted the fear of, of some longtime Texas residents that newcomers from coastal cities may bring liberal politics from their home states. Abbott's popularity has declined over his tenure, and a recent poll showed that 36% of Texas rate him as very unfavorable, compared to 19% who say that he is very favorable. The two-term incumbent governor spoke to a half-empty room. Dude, you're an idiot. You're an idiot, Abbott. Yeah, Californians are moving there, and they, and they happen to be California conservatives. Okay. But do you really think that California conservatives don't want gay people to get married? You really think our conservatives are like that? You really think California conservatives don't want a woman's right to choose? Don't believe in her reproductive rights? You really fucking believe that, man? You believe that, that, that our California conservatives don't like immigrants? Let me just go on a limb right now and just apologize for California conservatives to you, Abbott. You fucking idiot. Your brain needs a wheelchair, bro. You're... You're disgusting. Our, our California conservatives, as much as I dislike them, have at least a, a ounce of scruples in their in their blood. Unlike you, heartless, child murdering piece of shit, Abbott. California conservatives is the reason why your state's going blue. Your state's going fucking blue, and it's because of California. Fucking remember that. Remember that shit. Your state is going blue because we sent our values to you. Because when you come to California, you don't bring your state's values here. Nah. You come here and we indoctrinate you, you willingly, through our value system. California-based values. And they're unshakable. As you're finding out right now. Also, AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez stopping by in Dallas for a, uh, on a uh, election campaign for local, for Beto. Okay, uh, this is uh, Business Insider, dated February 13th, 2022. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez says it's inevitable that Texas turned blue. Rep. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez said this week, this weekend, that it is inevitable that Texas will go blue. It will happen. The only only question is when, Texas, she asked at a rally for progressive candidates. She added that if we flip Texas, we flip the country, calling on supporters to help make that happen. Ocasio, damn, Ocasio-Cortez saying Texas is going to go blue. Your own constituents are saying Texas is going blue. And one more thing. I want to add just one more thing here. Uh, back in 2017, uh, someone else said that Texas was going to go blue. Let's uh, let's uh, go to that clip real real quick here. In in regards to middle class leaving, uh, that's actually a, a good thing. Um, we we need we need these spots opened up for the new wave of of immigrants to come up. It's what we do. We're exporting our middle class to the United States. You guys should be thanking us for that. Not only that, you know, when our middle class does move out to Texas and to Colorado, they're taking our values out to the United States and and to Texas. So if you look at Texas, in fact, all the major cities that that Californians are are, are going to, they are turning blue. And soon enough, Texas will be a blue state. And uh, dude, uh, all of your the red <laughs> states soon enough. Uh, That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. I said it. And yeah, I, I, I had to be high to get on your show, Tucker. You fuck. In your fucking face, man. I mean, I, I, I called that shit out. You know, I called out I called out the January 6th bullshit. Everything about the white supremacy I've been saying for years. That was inevitable. Texas turning blue. That was inevitable. And you know what else is inevitable? Inevitable, folks. California independence. That's all I got. Back to you, Hal. That was Activism in Action with Shankar Singham. Texas. The California independence movement's second favorite punching bag. 
Guess who's first? Either way, you gotta love it. For more We Told You So moments, let's go to Talking Points. All right, tonight on Talking Points, we revisit a sad but pervasive truth that faces the California independence movement. And it goes, as Californians, we are so used to the U.S. government's failures that we actually celebrate only getting 20% of what the government promises as a victory. Because as Californians living in a national donor state, obviously, we're used to U.S. disappointment. Funds marked for California road repair get diverted to Kentucky, so California has to raise a gas tax to make up the difference. FEMA money that was supposed to go to fire relief in Northern California ends up somehow helping Gulf states rebuild after hurricanes. The California State House estimates it'll cost $100 million to address homelessness. And the federal government gives us $21 million in Joe Biden's Build Back Bitter plan. California's long overdue high-speed rail... That project moves forward in fits and starts because national funding shortfalls rise and fall with Washington political tides. And then there's the latest federal symbolic gesture towards keeping a campaign promise. Yeah, you know where we're going here. We get to celebrate a $10,000 relief for people long suffering with crippling student loan debt. As again, with the California national average student loan debt running just shy of $50,000, We get a measly 20% of what was promised by Joe Biden during his presidential campaign. To add insult to injury, the Democratic majority in Congress is quick to point out that people should be happy with whatever little relief people are going to get. Because Nancy Pelosi and many of the high-ranking Democrats in Congress think any financial relief on student loans is a political mistake during a recession that might cost them precious Democratic votes in the midterms. It's a subject they don't want to talk about. That says nothing compared to California Republicans in the U.S. House of Representatives like Bakersfield's village idiot Kevin McCarthy, who rails against the student loan relief plan, calling it astonishingly unfair. Astonishingly unfair. (laughs) I got to ask, Kevin, unfair to who? Out-of-state Wall Street banks? I mean, boo fucking who? Am I supposed to give a shit about how this affects Kevin and Nancy's stock portfolios or something? But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Your California representatives and your California tax dollars at work. Uh, So again, as Californians, we are so used to U.S. government failure that we actually celebrate only getting 20% of what the government promised us as a victory. I mean, okay, stop. Right there. Don't get me wrong. That $10,000 can be a big help to many of those suffering with student loans. I'm sure it will be. If people can figure out how to jump through all the government hoops in order to qualify for that relief in the first place. But it's hard to justify that glowing and gushing response Californians are seeing from Washington's progressives on the National Sunday political talk shows. I mean... Case in point, here are some choice edited moments from an interview with U.S. House Progressive Caucus member Pramila Jayapal. Too happy. This is just such terrific news for 43 million people across the country who are going to get some form of relief. 20 million people will have their debt entirely canceled and uh, another 23 million will see some sort of relief and i have just been hearing the stories and been moved to tears by people whose dreams are now possible all kinds of stories that are just so phenomenal and i really think the president has done something remarkable um, and something that will change lives well the way government works is you don't fix everything all at once that doesn't mean we should stop progress right now for 43 million people who are going to get relief. 
It's fantastic. Look, Democrats are delivering. So we have an opportunity to sell that we are for working people. We are for opportunity. We are fighting for regular people to be able to thrive, not just survive. Wow. (laughs) She seems positively chipper, doesn't she? So Californians with crushing student loan debt who can meet the federal requirements can expect $10,000 in student loan relief, which everyone on both sides of America's political aisle have made a point to assure the American public that this is a one-time deal at best. And at best, it's the best the U.S. budget can handle at this time. Of course... In other news this week, it was announced that a $57 billion six-month aid package had been authorized to assist the Ukrainians in the war against Russia. And, of course, the USS Gerald R. Ford, that's CVN-78, our newest aircraft carrier, our biggest and most expensive aircraft carrier, by the way, built at a conservative estimate of $22 billion, but no one knows for sure because it's classified, not and that doesn't include the cost of aircraft by the way which will become the 12th aircraft carrier to join one of America's seven navy fleets when she sets sail on her first deployment sometime before the end of the year giving the united states a 6 to 1 aircraft carrier battle group advantage over china and a 12 to 1 advantage over the russian confederation but then again who's counting because for it's only money, right? I mean, America always finds money for war or bank bailouts or oil company subsidies, right? Does anybody even want to talk about the fact that the $22 billion spent on that state-of-the-art aircraft carrier, honoring a second-rate president, by the way, would have been enough to end homelessness? Guess not. Because, again... As Californians, we are so used to U.S. government failure that we actually celebrate only getting 20% of what the government promised as a victory. And year after year, it's still vote blue no matter who for 70% of Californians. Gotta ask, are we tired yet? Einstein said it was the nature of insanity to do the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. So what does that make Californians who refuse to embrace the idea of a free and independent California in favor of slavishly pinning all their hopes on American political parties and U.S. national elections that fail to ever really get anything done? Police brutality, voting rights, civil rights, reproductive rights, LGBTQ rights, homelessness, guns, the environment. Representative uh, Pramila Jayapal actually had the nerve to comment in that video the governments don't get things done in a day. Well, hate to break it to you, but the student loan crisis has been building for 50 years here in California ever since Governor Ronald Reagan took a hatchet to the California Community College system. You can't say nobody saw this shit coming. But that seems to be the story with everything in the American political universe. Unless it's war or tax cut, all issues must remain permanent arguments for U.S. politicians to use to get votes so no political issue can ever really get settled. So, as Californians, again, we are so used to U.S. government failure that we will actually celebrate only getting 20% of what the government promised as a victory. Because the fact is, symbolic gestures, temporary gains, and incremental improvements are all Californians can ever expect until the day California is its own free and independent nation. This is Talking Points. Well, that's it, Red Star Rebels, and that's it for Red Star Report. For more Red Star Report information, I invite you to check out our website at redstarreport.com. Subscribe to our Red Star Report YouTube channel. Remember when I said shameless? Go to our Red Star Report Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram. Give us a like. Give us a follow. Because 
if you want to support the real California Independence Movement's media group, it's all about the algorithms. Our thanks to you, our Red Star Rebels, for watching. We are Red Star Report. Oh, my God.